Let's look at an example. Find the minimum and maximum tangential stress for an open hole well that is oriented 20 degrees north and deviated 20 degrees from north and deviated 20 degrees from vertical at a depth of two kilometers. Assume hydrostatic pore pressure gradient and a Poisson ratio of 0.2. So if we then go to MATLAB. Can you guys see that? Probably not. Probably not. Um, better? All right, so I, I've got a whole bunch of little functions over here that I've written. Some of them, like compute SG, um, compute SG is one that you've already have, right? This is the same, right? So take the principal stress and the three angles, alpha, beta, gamma as arguments, perform the rotation, and return the stress in the geographic frame. And again, right in the spirit of what I've been telling you guys, write small functions that you can test individually. Right? So then compute SB. Uh, compute SB takes the principal stresses, the wellbore angles, and the geographic angles. So that's delta and phi and alpha, beta, gamma. Uh, here's the rotation matrix. The first thing I do is compute SG, right? So compute the geographic stress, calling the other function, and then perform the rotation to, to return SB. Okay. So then, so I mean, I guess we can we can go ahead and do that. So SB is. Thirty twenty five twenty. Uh, the next thing. Um, the next argument is the wellbore angles, which are 20 and 20. And the next thing are the geographic angles, which are 90, 0, 0. And so there is the stress in the wellbore. You can see where is the principal stresses. Uh, or only the, on the diagonal, then you know, here's is a full tensor. Symmetric. So then, um, <coughs> the next thing is I compute the wellbore stress. So the wellbore stress takes the effective stress, the Poisson ratio, uh, I didn't. I didn't say what theta was, but theta is just where al where around the wellbore you want to do the evaluation. Right? So from it's the angle from X B to any point that you want to do the evaluation at. To any point. So. Example. Yeah. So the effective stress, uh, nu theta, the point that you want to do it, and then delta p 
uh, the difference in the in the pore pressure in the mud wave. Uh, in the example, did I give a mud wave? I didn't, so we'll just assume it's. Okay. Yeah, we'll just assume it's balanced, right? Um, okay, so the effect of stress then is SB minus times the pore pressure. Uh, the pore pressure is what? Depth of two kilometers. Twenty MPa. So twenty. So there's my effective stress. Then I can compute the well bore stress with S effective. Mu is point two. Theta, I'll just choose one. I'll just choose zero for me, for the time being. And then delta P will just assume a zero, since I didn't give it. Um, that's just one of the angles, right? So the, I mean, that's just one of the stress va values. So there are the sigma ZZ, sigma theta, theta, sigma tau Z, sigma RR. Right? Uh, so then I have these functions compute the minimum and maximum. And they actually, it, th those functions take the same arguments and then immediately just call compute wellbore stress. And then using the values that you get from compute wellbore stress, then they return either the minimum or maximum depending on the function. Okay. And so we could do that. Let's, let's say we'll, we'll compute the minimum. Tangent stress. So that's the minimum tangent stress at the at the point theta equal to zero. Right? But you know it's, it's not that useful to do a pointwise calculation because what you care about is where the minimum is a minimum, <laughs> right? Right around the wellbore, and so. Um, if we do something like uh, let's do uh, let's say theta is a linear space that goes from zero to three fifty nine, and so that gives me a hundred values of theta that I can evaluate, right? And then we'll just set uh, st min is equal to zeros at 100. Right? Uh, and then we can just write a little loop, right? So 4i equals 1 to 100. Uh, st min i equals compute minimum tangential stress as effective uh, theta i 0 0.20 range. Something didn't work right. is not right. <coughs> what did I do wrong? Huh? Oh, well, that, that's, that's bad. 
Okay, so starting at 4, i equals 1 to 100. Um, let's do min. Yeah, you're saying it's mu theta. That's better. So then, as you go around the well bore, minimum tangential stress uh, oscillates, and you can actually see it goes into tension in some places, right, where it's negative. And so in that case, you, you, you could expect to have a uh, tensile fracture. at those locations. So, you know, also, when we talked about before for, and it's important that you remember, but for a, um, for a vertical well, where can you expect breakouts to occur? That's correct. For an arbitrarily deviated well, where can you expect breakouts to occur? Uh, it depends. Right? It, it depends. So it's, it's, you can't just say yes in the direction of the SH min because it depends on the angle, right? Right. Yeah, because now, I mean, just imagine, imagine you have a horizontal well. If, if you have a horizontal well, the now one of the stresses acting on, you know, say, say you have a horizontal well that's perfectly. Uh, Perfect and drilled perfectly in the direction of SH max. Right now you have SH myth and SV acting on it. So, so uh, no. So if it, you know, in this case, in the minimum where it goes into tension, then you could expect to have a tensile, not a breakout. Right, they're different. Break. Um, Tensile induced uh, induce fractures occur at the azimuth of SH max in a vertical well, right? Because they open, they open perpendicular to SH min. Right? Same with hydraulic fractures. Right? Tensile induced drilling fractures are small hydraulic fractures, right? That that are not created for stimulation purposes, but created on on accident during the process of drilling. Uh, in, a, in an arbitrarily deviated well, the answer the the, an the answer is it's it's not that simple. You have to compute it. <laughs> you have to yeah. Did you say that when you have two sides of the same fracture, you have to In perpendicular to SH min, right? Which makes sense, right? It, so to to open a fracture. If you're just if you're just pressurizing a well, right, that's that's perfectly circular and it's going to fail somewhere. It's going to fail in the direction that it it, it takes le least less energy to open the fracture, and that is always going to be perpendicular to SH min at the azimuth of SH max in a vertical well. In a horizontal well, it really depends on the faulting regime because you could have a minimum, your, your minimum stress could be the vertical stress. So, anyway, I, you know, the question actually I asked to compute both of them, but, you know, <laughs> once you have the computer code, to compute the other one is just a matter of calling change out min for max, right? I mean, I guess just do it.
there's the maximum. In, th in this case, they're all compressive. And so, you know, to evaluate, to evaluate the failure surface, uh, you also have to consider uh, sigma RR, which in this case is zero. Right? Is sigma, sigma RR is equal to delta P. So in this case, it's zero. So th in order to compute the, fa you know, the more Coulomb failure surface, you're going to take the maximum principal stress, which is ST max, minus the minimum principal stress, which is, again, we're trying to compute a compressive breakout, not a, not a tensile fracture. So we'll, we'll, ex we'll ignore the fact that the other ones go into tension in some places. Then, you know, it's just going to be this minus that. That's going to give you your more circle that you can evaluate, you know, with a, with a more, you know, with a, a cohesion and an internal friction angle, you can use those two to evaluate whether the materials are going to fail or not, whether you anticipate breakout. And if you do this at every point, right, remember this, this curve, this is, these, are, these are angles around the wellbore, right? So if you, if you do this at every point, you can basically make a decision on whether at that point you're going to have a, a breakout, right? And so then you move over and you do it again, you do it again. And so if you, if you continue to do that all the way around the wellbore, then you can sort of predict breakout widths, right? Because in some places you're going to have breakouts, in some places you won't, and then you can just sort of sum up those, the places you do, uh, sum up the, the angles, you know, depending on how many times you evaluated theta, right? You can figure out how, what the breakout widths are. And so, basically with the codes that I've written here, I mean the little functions I've written here, and just a little bit more logic, you can reproduce all of those plots in Zobak's book where he shows, you know, we, we looked at some for, you know, required CO, required unconfined compressive strength, required, and, uh, you know, required breakout widths for stability and everything. Um, 